Prime Minister Brown calls for intensified emphasis on intra-regional travel. Scary Spastro rocked by murder of a 34-year-old man, the fourth since the start of 2022. Authorities warn Fed promoters to ensure their patrons are all of legal drinking age. And World Health Organization says another subvariant of Omicron could be emerging. Those are the top stories. The news in detail starts right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS and Tigas Must Trusted Name News. My name is Garfield Burford. Welcome, of course. We're starting a little late today because of our live coverage of the closing press conference of the CARICOM meeting taking place in Suriname. And I'm Joel Wayne. Good evening. CARICOM has committed to address the challenges of intra regional travel. The matter was raised at the conclusion of the as a press conference of the 43rd regular meeting of CARICOM heads in Suriname. Well, the issue has consistently been raised by Antigua and Barbados Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown. You know, CARICOM Chairman and Suriname's President Trendrika Prasad uh, Santoki uh, well, commented on the issue at that press conference. He indicated that there will be further discussions and further work on this matter as well. Meanwhile, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, has announced the decision has been taken to resume the petro Carib arrangement. He's indicated that there will be a 35% payment off the top, and of course the remainder of that payment for oil from Venezuela will of course be converted into a long-term loan. Much more on this major developing story, of course, there had been sanctions and had been, there had been an effect on the petro caribe Agreement because of, of course, the sanctions on the Maduro administration in Caracas. But of course, uh, this issue just announced a short while ago by St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, that there will be an agreement for Petro Caribe agreement to be resumed, a major developing story which has been resonating across the region as well. Much more of that coming up in subsequent newscasts. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown is calling for increased emphasis to be placed on intra regional travel. The Prime Minister was interviewed on the Caribbean Connect show from Suriname, where he's, of course, attending the 43rd regular meeting of CARICOM heads of government. A report this evening from Rakib Aparicio. It's critical that we resolve the issues of um, connectivity of both um, maritime and air transportation. Uh, you can't um, sustain an integration movement if you can't move goods and people effectively. And that has been a major problem within the integration uh, movement from since its inception. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, the Honorable Gaston Brown, says improving intra-regional travel is one of the issues he's hoping to address with his fellow regional leaders. And uh, we're hoping that we can come up with a new model for air transportation, one in which we can um, sustain uh, uh, air transportation uh, to the extent that we have a model in which uh, member states will contribute. So you have a model of um, shared burden and shared benefit. The Prime Minister laments, Countries in the past have benefited from regional travel initiatives without paying their fair share of contributions. This, he says, cannot continue. It will require some level of subsidy, uh, but when you look at the economic gains and even the social gains, it's uh, public good to have reliable regional transportation and therefore the countries of the region should not hesitate um, to provide whatever subsidy that is necessary. Prime Minister Brown believes efficiency will be key. We need um, aircraft that can carry people and also carry um, uh, products. And similarly, um, with the um, maritime transportation, it should be um, a vessel that can carry people and to carry products. Uh, so that you don't have to rely exclusively on carrying um, individuals, but at the same time, you have a combination of both. And by so doing, we'll be able to move um, people and to move um, goods more effectively within the region and certainly to sustain our integration movement. The Caragom Heads of Government meeting concluded Tuesday. Rakib Aparis reporting for ABS News. And in this developing story from the High Court, this country's law which criminalizes burglary or anal sex has been ruled to be unconstitutional. 
That's right, Joel. The decision was handed down today in the High Court after the matter was filed last year. Joining us on telephone this evening, one of the attorneys for the claimants, who is Andrew Okola. Good evening, uh, Mr. Okola. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that you're extremely busy. Very short interview. Just talk to us about uh, what happened in terms of that, uh, the claim that was made. When was it made? Who were the claimants? And how big is this decision? But, thank you very much, Garfield. And good evening to you and the viewers and listeners um, to your program. Now, you are correct in that a decision was handed down today in a matter that one may consider to be monumental in terms of its impacts for rights. A claim was filed in the High Court of Antigua and Barbuda in respect of this matter on, by way of originating motion um, on the 21st of January, 2021. And in that claim, a number of things were challenged. Uh, but, but, but to crystallize what the challenge was in respect of that claim, the, <clears throat> the claimants for that claim were two Antiguans. And what the court had to determine was whether sections 12 and 15 of the Sexual Offences Act the 1995 Act, um, whether those sections are unconstitutional because we say they contravenes the Constitution of Antigua and Barbuda, more particularly sections 3, 12, and 14 of the Constitution. And th that's the area dealing, and I'm just going to be as candid as it is, dealing with the law in relation to so, boggery. And what the court has found, um, and obviously we're doing this as a crash course, but what the court has found in, a, in what, I mean, many will say, in a, again, a, a very, very detailed judgment um, prepared by the high courts um, in Antigua and Barbuda, what the court has found um, can be found at, at paragraph 88 of that judgment. And what the court has <coughs> determined is one, that Section 12 of the Sexual Offences Act 1995 in fact contravenes Section 3, 12, and 14 of the Constitution of Antigua and Barbuda. And, and just so that you know, your, your viewers and your listeners understand, we're talking about it contravenes the right to liberty, it contravenes protection of the law, contravenes freedom of expression, protection of personal privacy and protection from discrimination on the basis of sex. So effectively what the court said, insofar as section 12 of the Sexual Offenses Act 1995 is inconsistent with the rights of persons 16 years and older to engage in consexual, sexual intercourse with in private. So in other words, if you are in private engaged in sexual activities, there was a time when if part of your sexual activity include you going into the anus, it would have been criminal and you could have been criminally charged. The court here has taken a different view um, based on the challenges that um, was issued on the respective legislation. It also <clears throat> declared that Sexual 15 of the Sexual Offences Act, 1995 Act, also contravenes Sections 3, Section 12, and Section 14. And again, it's, it's the same broad areas of rights. One is rights to liberty, protection of law, freedom of expression, um, privacy, and um, discrimination. And, and the court also declared that paragraph, well, well certainly section 15B of the, of, of the act, where the word there, or the words there says male person or female person, that is deleted and replaced with the word person. So in other words, it's gender neutral as it were. And, 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 and Garfield, this is fundamental, fundamental, fundamental. Um, in, in, terms, in terms of justice, in terms of persons who have had to, during their lifetime, struggle with the injustice, 
that certain laws of a certain time might place upon them can now rest assured and in fact sleep easy and free um, tonight that Antigua and Barbuda, certainly the leading light in the Eastern Caribbean so far as this movement is concerned, we would say I've gotten it right in a very, what I again describe as a monumental judgment. And, and I think I, I, I would be remiss, Garfield, to, to say that the fruits of this judgment ought likely to be left on the legal team's shoulder. I and mean, that, that, that's for the claimant, but that's not so. I, I, will, I, will, I will say that quite squarely. Our colleague who represented the respondents on the other side were quite proper, sensible, and engaged on all the issues. And I'm sure they would have gotten their instructions from those who instruct them, which would be the government of Antigua and Barbuda. And the government of Antigua and Barbuda, I'm wanting to only say, have taken a mature, proper, sensible decision um, in respect of the issue in the 21st century. And, you know, so, so commendation is, is, is there. And I'm also certainly the commendation is, is, is for the claimants who have decided that they want to be on the right side of history and have put themselves, um, as it were, at the main station in respect of the, 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 this, this challenge. So, so commendation, um, Raphael, um, certainly goes around my friends on the other side. Okay, uh, Andrew, um, Andrew, last question, very, very quickly, because we're pretty much out of time, in overtime, actually. Who are the claimants? Could you say that quickly first, please? Yes, the, the claimant would be one Arden David and Alex, Alexandrina Wong. All right, uh, certainly we'll, we'll get more from you on this tomorrow. Uh, certainly, Andrew, uh, when we go through the judgment in detail and look at the implications, we thank you so much. Have you gotten any indication of an appeal at this point? I, I don't have that indication, but I, I, I do think that, again, the very cordial, mature, and in fact, pragmatic and sensible decision from my learned friends on the opposite, on the opposite side um, would indicate that there ought not to be a challenge by way of appeal. I mean, obviously, we're going to be scrutinizing the decision of the High Court, um, Her Ladyship Justice Robertson, a very fundamental decision. And, you know, I'm sure if issues come up, we, we will treat with it. But we are, we, are, we are very pleased, as it were. All right, Andrew Akola, thank you so much. Attorney for the claimants, we thank you so much for having joined us to unpack what uh, happened in the High Court today. A uh, significant thank you judgment. Very much, Indeed, all the very best to you. If you're just joining us, uh, that judgment by the High Court has indicated that the country's laws criminalizing sodomy or buggery uh, have been ruled to be unconstitutional. Uh, Andrew Cole represented the two claimants in that matter. Of course, we'll have more on this developing story as it unfolds. Thanks very much, Andrew Akola. Adjo? And police are asking for anyone with information on the country's latest murder to come forward. 34-year-old St. Clair David was killed after being shot in Skerry's pasture. David was standing near a shop in his com community when police said two men alighted a vehicle and shot him. The shooting happened between 5.40 and 6 Monday afternoon. The incident has left some villagers shaken. A man who spoke to ABS News off camera today said David was a real friend and he's trying to come to terms with a tragic event. He told us he only managed to get half an hour's sleep last night. He also said that he had to revisit the crime scene earlier this morning in an attempt to accept his friend's death as a reality. Anyone with information can contact the Criminal Investigations Department at 462-3613, 462-3613, or Crime Stoppers 800 tips at 800 TIPS. This is the country's fourth murder since the start of 2022. Well, the police's traffic department has thrown its support behind the changes in the parade routes for Carnival this year. Head of the department, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Rodney Ellis, shared his views on the subject on Antigua Barbuda today. Reports. With the Carnival celebrations back after two years because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it may be a fitting time for a change. 
if indeed a change should occur. The notion of some aspects of the carnival celebrations outgrowing St. John's is being echoed by Assistant Superintendent of Police, Rodney Ellis. I, I welcome that because we've been pushing for that some years now and now we get the opportunity so we have to ensure that all goes well. Um, from Parham Junction, straight down so Sydney Walling Highway, yeah. down to a service station, which we call D service station. That would be the route for the, 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 the carnival celebration going straight up to Vivian Richard Stadium. ASP Ellis explains the lawmen will attempt to police the new proposed route with an event called Burn It Fitness Jam scheduled this week. Towards the coming up, we're going to have a test of it per se. They're having a function, the carnival committee having a function, they, I think they call it um, Fitness Jam. Okay. So we're going to okay. do a run on it on Thursday. What we're advising persons to walk alongside with us, walk with us. There would be some diversion, some interruption in the flow of traffic. It's easy on that particular road, not like in St. John, because there are a lot of um, by roads that persons can utilize. So he assures the new proposed route would not be an issue in maintaining order, although it may require more resources. The police are always in the city. And normally for the carnival, we would always have an operation order. So it would not be just traffic alone. Yeah. Persons would be utilized from the other district to come in and inform that particular operation order. Mm -hmm. So we would have police throughout the whole route. We'd have the escort, police escort in the front and to the rear, and police along the route. So it won't be an issue. Terry Andrew, ABS News. Meanwhile, Assistant Superintendent Ellis is placing Fed promoters on notice that their responsibility goes beyond the Feds. His comment comes on the heels of several vehicles of Fed goers being broken into and vandalized over the weekend. ASP Ellis says there should be a secure environment inside and outside these Feds. Promoters have to accept some responsibilities too. Because if you're having Feds, you must also put security in place for your patrons who are coming there because yes, you hire security not only to prevent persons from jumping fence and this type of thing, to protect people's property because that, that is part of your responsibility too. So you can hire private security, police are involved. Yes, we are patrolling, but you have to go a bit further. The lawman explains it's been a problem for some time where promoters have disregarded this responsibility. If you're going to have these type of shows that um, you have over 10,000 persons coming, most likely you have to have additional securities because you can't have 10,000 persons and want 10 police and 10 security officers. You need to step up. And this has been an issue. I used to work major events, so I know mm. and I understand this situation. So, yes, the poly, we have our part to play. Okay. But we can't send all our resources at LOL and leave the rest of the country unattended. We still have to carry out our other function in other areas. Mm -hmm. So these promoters need to step up too. In Hollis, Carnival season gets into high gear and full swing. There is a warning for promoters to ensure patrons at fets and similar events are of legal drinking age. The human brain does not complete development until the age of 25. Yet, my under 18 population has been in these varying fets, given different amounts of alcohol or whatever substance may happen at these fets. Director of the Family and Social Services Division, Fiona Charles Richard, says minors have attended several fets since the resumption of the events just under a year ago. She warns the safety of the country's minors is of utmost importance. Where are our parents as to how are you okay letting your under 18 young lady or young man go to a fete and come home drunk? Drunk to the point where they can't even remember how they got home. Here this, Charles Richards tells our news team, promoters can be fined when minors attend their events. The World Health Organization's lead scientists 
uh, paying keen attention to what they say is a clear pattern of COVID-19 infection. WHO Chief Scientist Dr. Sumia Swaminathan says subvariants of the Omicron variant have been the primary cause of recent waves of infection. Within Omicron, the virus has been changing and adapting and evolving uh, in that it's accumulating new mutations. And that's what we call the subvariants or the sub lineages. Each of them is uh, a little bit different from the previous one, but enough for it to try to escape the immune response a little bit. She says these waves have not translated into an increase in severe infections or COVID-19 related deaths. The WHO chief scientist attributes this to immunity built up from previous infections and COVID-19 vaccination. The vaccines are still proving to be highly effective, even against these newer variants. And that's something that you know we have to be really grateful for, that the original vaccines that were developed are still doing a very good job of protecting against severe disease, but of course, not as effective in completely preventing infections. You know, this developing story now, there could be another Omicron subvariant on the rise. It's being uh, not yet officially called, but some people are referring to it as BA.2.75, first reported from India and then from about 10 other countries. Um, there are still limited uh, sequences available to analyze. Dr. Sumia Swaminathan there, she says scientists have noticed several mutations relating to the potential subvariant. It's still too early to know if this uh, subvariant has uh, properties of uh, additional immune evasion or indeed of being more clinically severe. We don't know that. Luckily, the other subvariants of Omicron have not proven to be more uh, severe. They've all been more or less like the original Omicron. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News. Just an update on the story that we told you about earlier in our national developments. The Minister for Legal Affairs and Attorney General Honorable Sedora Benjamin says he will comment on today's High Court decision following Cabinet's meeting tomorrow. Of course, the High Court making a ruling that the country's buggery laws or laws criminalizing buggery are unconstitutional. More of the national developments when we come back from this break, including this one. One of this country's senior officials to address high level forum of the United Nations. And later we'll tell you about a story that Antigua and Bravida joins in celebrating 211th anniversary of Venezuela's independence. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Who's there with us, please? At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Yo, this is Skinny Fabulous, and I'm inviting you to be ready this carnival season with Quartz Ready Cash. Get up to $20,000 cash right now. No deposit needed, and it's completely hassle-free. You will have your money in your hand in less than 24 hours. What are you waiting for? Don't miss the vibes this carnival season. It's all about Quartz Ready Cash. Ready when you are. my friend, I'm stinking mad. Dr. Tubal Edwards, Chief Veterinary Officer here in Antigua and Barbuda. Invasive species are non-native species whose introduction does or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Border security in the veterinary department, we basically do our check at the airports or ports of imports. And that when we do these checks, these checks are to make sure that no animals other than what was asked to be imported are coming in. Hetty Dental Clinic offers you reasonable prices and the best dental job. Among the services provided by Hetty Dental Clinic are oral examinations, digital oral x-rays, whitening and fluoride treatment, digital panoramic x-rays, root canal treatment, 
wisdom tooth surgical extractions, cosmetic dentistry, crowns and bridges, dentures all kind full and partial, penis extractions, children's dentistry, dental implants and much much more. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30am to 4.30pm. And on Saturdays from 8.30am to 1.30pm. Telephone number 562-7878. See Hablo Espanol. Private parking is also available. Welcome back here in tune with the ABS Evening News. Director of International Trade in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Trade, John Murray King, is scheduled to make a presentation to the United Nations High Level Political Forum. Well, more on this story because Ms. King will represent or will present on the 6th of July following her acceptance of the invite extended by Colin Vixen Kalipali, 77th President of the Economic and Social Council, ESOC. Uh, well, in, it's an official letter. In an official letter to Ms. King, Ambassador uh, Kalipal uh, highly commended her vision and expertise. Uh, he believes she would add great value to the meeting by presenting highlights from Antigua and Barbuda's recent voluntary national review, or VNR, in the forum. King spearheaded Antigua and Barbuda's first voluntary national review process in 2021, which received widespread commendations from the international community and high commendations as well. The report outlined the nation's experiences and possible policy interventions towards accelerating the implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, of course. That happens tomorrow on the 6th of July, of course. Uh, John Murray King will make that presentation uh, to the high-level uh, commission of the United Nations the, uh, Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC. Antigua and Barbuda has congratulated the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela on today's 211th anniversary of independence from Spain. A ceremony was held at the Simon Bolivar bus today, attended by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Venezuela's Ambassador Carmen Velasquez and other diplomats. Ambassador Velasquez says despite the attainment of independence over two centuries ago, the struggle for independence and self-determination continues. She lamented the fact that her country remains under criminal unilateral sanctions that violate the Charter of the United Nations and international law. We'll take a look at what happened in Caracas to mark the occasion during our regional news later. In fact, let's segue into the regional developments because when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at news from overseas. One of those stories that we're tracking very closely comes to us from Barbados because a high-level investigation is taking place there as a family of four is found dead. And internationally, embattled UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson rocked by the resignation of two of his senior ministers. Those stories coming up in detail right after this short break. Stay with us, please.